Okay, so many people do not understand this extremely important algebra concept. And because they don't really understand this, they're going to make a lot of mistakes when they're solving various types of algebra equations. And I'm going to demonstrate this point with this simple example right here. All right, so here is an equation, 2x is equal to 10. So my question to you is this. Uh, if we have this equation and I want to multiply both sides of the equation by the variable x, can we do this in algebra? In other words, is this allowed? And if this is allowed, what's the implications of doing this? Or maybe this is not allowed at all. Now, this is something that you should uh, know the answer to if you want to be successful in algebra. So tell me what you think. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to use this simple example to kind of uh, really go over an extremely important and uh, highly confused topic in mathematics. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, if you just enjoy this content, well then hit that like button and that subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. We're going to take 2x is equal to 10. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x. What happens? Well, this indeed is allowed. Okay, yes, we can do this, but there's a twist. Okay, so here is our equation. 2x is equal to 10. And then we're going to multiply x uh, by both sides of the equation. We're going to end up with the new equation. 2x squared is equal to 10x. So what just happened? Well, you can do that. But what happens is you can introduce something called extraneous solutions, extraneous solutions. And that is the topic of this video. Okay, And there's going to be many times in algebra where you need to multiply both sides of the equation by a variable or variable expression. But when that happens, you have to look out for extraneous solutions. Now, if you got this answer completely right, well, that is uh, very impressive indeed. Matter of fact, I want to go ahead and uh, celebrate your algebra knowledge success by giving you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of recognizing where you may have extraneous solutions in algebraic equations. Now, uh, if you tell that to any of your friends or family, they're going to be like, that's totally boring, and uh, you know what? Enjoy your algebra. I'm going back to my Netflix uh, show. But uh, in all seriousness, if you got this right, that's fantastic. It uh, tells me that you um, you know, learned algebra really well, you have a great algebra teacher, or maybe you've been on my YouTube channel for some time. Either case, great job. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this topic right now. And this is something tremendously important. Now, we're going to uh, take a look at this point here, extraneous solutions. I'm going to tell you what this means and why you have to be on the lookout for them. So here is our problem. We have 2x is equal to 10, and we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x. So some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what's the whole point here of doing this? I could just solve this equation right here, 2x is equal to 10. And yes, that's true. Okay, So let's go ahead and just uh, review this right here, 2x is equal to 10. So how do I solve this equation? Okay, well, this is super easy, right? All I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2, and I get x is equal to 5. This is the one and only solution to this equation, right? Let's go ahead and see why. Because when I replace this x with 5, uh, this creates a true statement. In other words, uh, 2 times 5 is 10 is equal to 10. That is true. And 5 is the only number is that when we uh, multiply it by 2, that will make this true. So there's only one solution to this equation. Now, I'm going to uh, kind of give you some bonus knowledge here. And uh, we said that there's one solution to this equation. It's x is equal to 5. Okay, But there's something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, what a lot of you probably are not familiar with. And uh, hopefully you are uh, familiar with this. But if you're not, this is a very easy to understand concept and extremely important. And basically what this says is that if you have a polynomial equation, then the degree 
of that equation is how many solutions you have. So what, what does that mean? Well, first of all, we have to understand what a polynomial is. And a lot of students are like, oh, yeah, I study polynomials in my algebra class. But what is a polynomial? Well, very simply, a polynomial is some sort of variable or variables. You can have like x, y, doesn't make a difference. Now, what's important here, these vari variable or variables, is that the powers of these variables, okay, are whole numbers, okay? In other words, you have positive integers uh, or zero. So like zero, positive one, positive two, et cetera. You can't have like a negative power. So like y to the negative uh, seven, this right here would not be a polynomial. This is something different. Or the square root of x, this is not a polynomial. Now, in front of the variable, you can have any real number. Okay, so you can have like negative 3.8x to the 6. That is a polynomial term. So you can string these together and create all different sorts of polynomials. But the main idea here is that uh, if you have a polynomial equation, the fundamental theorem of algebra states that the degree, which is the highest power of that equation, is how many solutions you will have. So let's take a look at this. Do we have a polynomial equation? Yes, indeed, we do, because this is x or x to the first. Okay. So this one says, oh, the fundamental theorem of algebra says, fundamental theorem of algebra, excuse me, is going to say there's only one solution. And of course, we know that that's x is equal to 5. All right. So this is something you also want to be aware of in algebra. And uh, this, you know, again, will come into play in different types of uh, situations. Let me give you a fast example. If I have 5x cubed minus x squared plus 8x minus 1 is equal to 0. Is this a polynomial equation? Yes, it is. Okay, this is a polynomial equ equation, and the highest power of this equation is 3. So therefore, uh, using the fundamental theorem of algebra, there will be three solutions. Now, these solutions can be real numbers or complex number solutions, and... Um, Anyways, you want to be aware of this because, in other words, when you're solving this, you're like, I must find those three solutions because that's how many uh, solutions exist. Now, uh, some of you might be saying, well, make your point about extraneous solutions, Mr. YouTube Math Man, and I'm getting to that. But let's go ahead and just take this equation here, 2x is equal to 10. Now, equations in algebra are like balance scales, right? They're just like a scale, and the left-hand side is you know, equal to the right-hand side. It's like a fulcrum. A scale, right? So if I wanted to, I could say, well, I'll add five over here and I'll add five over here. If I add five to both sides of the equation, did I harm the equation in any ways? No, you did not, right? If I have a scale, okay, and you know, let's just think about, you know, this in terms of weight, and I add five pounds here and five pounds here, is it still in balance? Yes, it's still in balance, right? Because I'm adding a number to both sides of the equation. So in algebra, this is definitely allowed. So let's take a look at what happens here. I'll end up with the equation 2x plus 5 is equal to 10 plus 5, which of course is 15. And I could solve this equation. Now, of course, you know, I'm making this, you know, harder on myself. I could subtract both sides by 5 and I put uh, 2x is equal to 10. And look, we're right back to x is equal to 5. So by adding uh, um, a number to both sides of this equation, it really didn't disturb anything, right? I'm allowed to do that. Now, why I want to do that, that's a whole different question, but you can do that and nothing happened. Well, this is not the case. Uh, now, by the way, too, if I add, okay, a number or subtract a number or multiply or divide a number in a linear equation like this, nothing's going to happen. That's perfectly legal in algebra. But when we do a, when we take a variable and we start multiplying both sides of the equation with the variable, well, then this creates a whole different situation. A situation you're going to see why in just one second. But before I show you why, I'm going to show you this. And I'm going to ask you to uh, subscribe to my channel. And really, yes, this is helping me, but it's helping me uh, really reach out to other people that are interested in math or, you know, really need assistance in mathematics, okay? The way I like to teach math is to try to make it interesting, but more, uh, most importantly is I try to uh, explain these concepts in clear and understandable ways. So basically, ways that don't sound like a textbook and, uh, you know, I don't want like, to water these concepts down because it's important that you understand these details. But anyways, by you subscribing, it really does help that algorithm 
help me reach other people. And if you're going to do that, might as well hit that not uh, bell notification so you get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get into uh, the real main uh, point of this video, and that is extraneous solutions. Okay, so we're taking this equation right here, and we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by, by x, right? And x would represent a number, but what ends up happening? Okay, well, let's just keep in mind that 2x is equal to 10. We know that the solution to this equation is x is equal to 5. We already figured that out, right? So unlike when we add like 5 to both sides of the equation, nothing really happens. We still come back to that one equation, x is equal to 5. But when I multiply, okay, this equation now by x on both sides, what ends up happening is we have 2x squared is equal to 10x, all right? Now, what type of equation is this? Well, this is a quadratic equation. And look right here, now we have two solutions. Well, over here, we only had that one solution. Now we have a polynomial equation to, of degree two. Okay, so this, is, this equation now has been changed in such a way where we will have two solutions to this uh, equation. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and solve this for you here. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract uh, 10x from both sides of the equation. So it'll look like this. And now I can uh, factor a 2x out. Now, hopefully you understand what I'm doing here. So uh, we're factoring um, our greatest common factor. So this is 2x times x, that gets me back to 2x squared. And 2x times this five gets me back to 10x, okay? Now, if you don't understand this, I'm gonna give you a couple quick suggestions. One, if you really want to learn these algebra concepts from me, I'm gonna leave links to all my main courses in the description below so you can check that out. Uh, this is really be like algebra one level work. Okay, so here to solve uh, this equation, uh, what we need to do is set each factor equal to zero. This is something called the zero product property, okay? In other words, we have this thing times this thing and the answer is zero. Well, if you're multiplying two things together and the answer is zero, then one or both of these things must be zero. So let's go ahead and solve these respective uh, equations. X is gonna be equal to five, okay? And two X is equal to zero. Well, X is equal to zero right here, okay? So as promised, we have two solutions to our uh, quadratic equation. X is equal to zero and X is equal to five. Okay, so now let's go back up here and uh, we have X is equal to five and X is equal to zero, okay? this is. Uh, the answers that we came up with after we multiplied the equation, both sides of the equation by x. So if I say, all right, let me go ahead and check this work here. And if I plug in five into this equation, this is gonna work, right? Because two times five is equal to 10. No problem, okay? But what happens if I plug in this other solution, zero, okay? Well, two times zero, is that equal to 10, okay? two times zero, no, that's zero. Zero is not equal to 10. So X is equal to zero is not, is not a solution to this equation, okay? It's not a solution. What it is, it's an extra solution. We gotta throw that thing away because that does not work in the original equation. However, X equals uh, five does. And this is the main, main point that I want to uh, kind of really make sure you understand is that there's gonna be plenty of times in algebra we're going to have to multiply uh, both sides of the equation by a variable or some sort of variable expression. So don't be afraid to do that. But after you've um, done that, you need to check for extraneous solutions. And that's kind of, you know, how you check for extraneous solutions, especially in uh, radical equations where there's square roots. This becomes a whole nother kind of uh, area of confusion. But uh, anyways, if you can at least remember, hey, I can do this, but I have to check for extraneous solutions, then that is an excellent start. And again, a lot of people, you know, um, they just don't appreciate this or they're confused about it. And, uh, you know, typically when a lot of people are confused about something, well, that just generally means that either the textbooks are not making this clear enough or, you know, uh, people aren't paying attention uh, to the teacher or the teacher is not emphasizing this. This is really, really important in algebra. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. 
Thank you for your time and have a great day.